This is Five on Your Side at Five, focused on you. Today, the Columbia, Illinois community gathered for the funeral of a teen killed in a crash. 15-year-old Crawford Bryant was the passenger in a car when it crashed over Labor Day weekend. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mike Bush. And I'm Kelly Jackson. Columbia High School canceled class today, so students, staff, and family could attend his funeral. Holden Kerwicki joins us live tonight from Columbia with reaction from people who knew Bryant. Well, Kelly, Mike Crawford Bryant was just 15 years old when he passed away, but today we heard stories from both young and old about the positive ways that he impacted their lives. While many people in this community are still struggling with his loss, they say that his memory will live in their hearts forever. Columbia, Illinois has a population of just under 11,000 people. And Thursday morning, seemingly all of them were packed into Order Park. Today, is a celebration of life of Crawford Bryant, um, who was near and dear to everyone's heart in this community. 15-year-old Crawford Bryant was a standout on the soccer field, starring for Columbia High's varsity team as a sophomore. His team, whether it be for club or high school, was like another family for him. He was this gentle, soft-spoken, kind-hearted young man, and then he stepped on the field and suddenly became Superman. As tenacious as Crawford was on the field, Friends and family alike say he was always smiling off the pitch. So as Crawford's career began to take off and his talent became noticeable, uh, we ran into a problem. And <laughs> That's Crawford. Crawford had the most contagious laugh ever. It could be the most unfunny joke ever, but just hearing his laugh would make you crack up. If there was anyone he could make laugh, it was his friends. They meant so much to him, and he tried as often as he could. While the community still struggles to wrap their mind around why the 15-year-old was taken from them so soon. We feel like he was a gift from God, and, um, and even though we only had 15 years with him, God chose all of us to spend 15 years with this, this angel. The Columbia High School community will continue to honor Crawford's legacy tomorrow night when they take on their rivals from down Route 3 from Waterloo. Waterloo's fan base has already agreed to wear orange and blue as a sign of unity between the two communities. Reporting live in Columbia, Holden Kerwicki, 5 on your side. A suspect accused of shooting two officers in Macomb, Illinois, has been arrested after a nearly 24-hour standoff. Macomb is about three hours from St. Louis. The officers were shot last night while executing a warrant. After knocking and announcing themselves, officers forced their way into the home and were told they were shot. Both officers were taken to the hospital and have since been discharged. The suspect just surrendered to police about two hours ago. Tonight, one less hurdle for nuclear weapons workers. Some much needed clarity was given today at an event meant to honor their hard work. Our Justina Coronel was there in St. Charles County and she joined us in the newsroom with more information about today's event. Justina. Well, that banquet hall was filled with different types of workers from construction to production. However, they all had a common theme. Each worked at a contaminated site. My dad was a chemical operator and my mom worked in the lab. Her parents motivated her passion and purpose. Denise Brock's parents worked at the Mellencrout plant in downtown St. Louis, which produced uranium for the development of the first atomic bomb. I believe like 1945, so it was before I was ever born. And um, I heard about this piece of legislation. It uh, basically stated if you worked at one of these facilities, and they mentioned Mellencrot, and if you had cancer, you would be eligible for compensation. She claims the government denied her dad working there after dedicating 15 years, and so they fought. We were able to prove that employment, and my mom was actually the first payment out here in Missouri. Her dedication doesn't end there. On Thursday, this room in St. Charles County honored nuclear weapons workers. Many have filed claims for federal compensation for potential exposure from work sites. One of those laborers, Bill Maxey. I wouldn't have walked on that job if, if I would have known what was out there. He worked at the Mellencrout plant and Weldon Spring site, a plant that processed uranium. There's a lot of people that work there that has a lot of health problems. And we have a lot of foremans that passed away, you know, from various cancers. His recent claim for compensation was denied. And when they file a claim and Social Security detailed earnings are filed, it's going to come back to their subcontractor. The problem is that all of those subcontractors were not listed in a database. 
nor were the workers. That's where Brock steps in. She pressured the Department of Energy to dig deeper. Has actually found records, um, I believe they're mostly from Weldon Spring, that will actually list the names of workers and the subcontractors, as well as a list of about 5,000 employees that were known to be out there. She announced the game-changing decision on Thursday. Her speech talked about working to help the workers, always remembering her parents, the main focus in this fight. So long as there's a breath in my body, I'll continue to fight for these workers. Now, with these documents in the hands of the Department of Energy, these cases could be resolved soon. Now, every claim is case by case. However, if compensated, they could receive up to $400,000 with medical benefits. We've reported on the teacher shortage for years, but tonight we are talking to two school districts who have solved the shortage by taking their search overseas. Tracy Henson learned about where these educators are coming from and how qualified they are to teach in our schools. We had 188 applicants. Out of the 188, we were very selective. 21 educators made the cut. We had six different countries, and just so happened this year, we have two countries where all of our residents are from. They are from Ghana and the Philippines. With numerous positions to fill, St. Louis Public Schools partnered with a no-cost recruiting agency to hire into their teaching force. So our fifth and sixth grade, and mainly our middle school, science and math. But are the international educators qualified to teach in Missouri? Yes, they are credentialed. They have actually been teachers in their home country for a number of years. They come here to Missouri working with the U.S. Department of State, and we're helping them get reciprocity so they will have full certification in the state of Missouri. A process SLPS has already gone through. So just finishing out their credentials here in Missouri took about maybe a month, and we already have finished that process. The program is new for SLPS, but it's old hat for Riverview Gardens, so I talked to them about how it's going. They came in and they were instructionally strong and it went really well. They were able to support us in that area and we were able to support them in making the, the cultural connections and we had a great year. A great year that continues this year with a new group of international teachers. Tracy Henson, five on your side. Tracy also checked in with the teachers union that represents SLPS. Their president, Ray Cummings, said they support the international teachers as it helps the burden of the educator shortage. New details in a deadly school shooting in Georgia. What we're learning about a past investigation into the teen who was charged. Chuck Ioki helped Team USA wheelchair rugby win silver. What's next for him after Paris? And today, the hottest day of the week. So 93 we reached, and it was 73 to start the day. But you know that humidity stayed in check. It's 92 now. We cool down big time for the weekend, plus limited rain chances. We'll talk about it coming up.